as a general practitioner since 1984 and has been associated with the local Maharshi Ayurved Medical Center since 1993. He has got full Panchakarma facilities in his center. He is the founding member and member of both the Austrian as well as the German Doctors Association of Ayurved and co-director of German Ayurved Academy in Regensburg. He is a co-author of several books on Ayurved in the German language with Dr. Ernst Schrott from Germany. Thank Please. you very much, respected chairman, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Namaste. I'm, <laughs> I'm deeply bowing down with respect to the tradition of Ayurveda coming from Brahm and going through all the families of India till today. And I also want to greet my respected guru in Nadvigyan, Vaidya Raju, who is also on the panel. I want to shortcut a little bit, and maybe it'll be quick with some of the slides. First of all, I want to give you some information where Austria is. It's a little spot in the center of Europe, and it's not Australia. Uh, some points on the history of Ayurveda in Austria. Ayurveda was introduced to Austria in the mid-80s by a few doctors trained in Maharshi Ayurveda. And Ayurveda has been growing very quickly in Austria. Now the term of Ayurveda is certainly known by more than 50% of the population. There are many Ayurvedic services offered in Austria, but um, it's a pity that more than 95% of the services offered in our country are Ayurvedic massages for wellness and cosmetic purpose. And this is why Ayurved is not deemed a medicine, but more a wellness procedure in Austria. There's only very few doctors and licensed health practitioners who have postgraduate Ayurvedic training and offer Ayurvedic services. Only very few Vidas are permanently uh, active in Austria and also few health practitioners. So the public perception of Austria, it's almost a household term. But most people think Ayurveda is lots of oil, is wellness or cosmetics, is exotic, is expensive, and may imply dangerous procedures or toxic drugs. And Ayurveda is also associated quite a lot with beach holidays in Sri Lanka or Kerala. What are the legal and regulatory issues in Austria? Due to frequent requests from the general public, the Ministry of Health of our government has started recently to formulate regulations on Ayurveda. There is an expert panel on traditional Asian medicine attached to the uh, Ministry of Health, but it has all kinds of experts in Chinese medicine, but not even a single doctor trained in Ayurvedic medicine. The uh, license to practice Ayurveda in, in Austria is attached to being a licensed medical doctor. Only medical doctors are allowed to diagnose patients and decide a line of treatment. Whenever a person is a licensed doctor, he can treat, he can freely decide the line of treatment. He can choose Western treatment, homeopathic, Ayurvedic. But he himself is responsible for the outcome. So if he produces some undesirable effect, he can be sued if it doesn't go by the Western line. The government has recently passed the regulation for the minimum education of, in Ayurveda for use in wellness and cosmetics. So they're suggesting a 600-hour six hour training in Ayurveda. This is one of the first outcomes of, the, of this panel of, of experts. They also suggest that only a person who is trained as a masseur 
with 1,700 hours of training and an extra Ayurvedic training of at least 400 hours can give full abhyanga, etc. But this has to be put in a regulatory uh, issue. And only a nurse with a diploma with three years full-time training plus Ayurvedic training can give basti or other invasive Ayurvedic treatments. And all others, including Indian PAMS, can only work as health consultants, which is a business and not a medical profession. And they're not allowed to diagnose or treat patients and their diseases. What are the Ayurvedic bodies in Austria? There are few Panchakarma clinics headed by doctors. There's a few inpatient clinics, but none of them has a hospital status. And there's two or three outdoor clinics, outpatient clinics. And there's more than a hundred Ayurvedic massage parlors offering Ayurvedic massage and cosmetics. Most of them are situated in four and five stars hotel in the Austrian tourism industry. So here you can see why there's a very low key, <clears throat> low key understanding of Ayurved in, in the Austrian population. What is the education and training? <clears throat> Even in Vienna, in the capital city of Austria, there's more than 20, 20 institutions who offer training in Ayurveda, most of them Ayurvedic massage. But there's no common standard in training except for this one regulation that was issued now, and they will have to go by this. But there was anybody could call Ayurveda training in his, in his, um, in his pamphlets and even without real Ayurvedic background. So this is in the process of being regulated now. There are no training requirements for doctors or other health professionals uh, passed by the Ministry of Health. What's the business of Ayurveda alike in Austria? It's mainly the tourism industry that's into Ayurvedic business and there's the local wellness hotels and travel agents selling tours to India and Sri Lanka. What's the situation about Ayurvedic products? There have been no specific regulations for Ayurvedic products in our country and Ayurvedic products that are directly sent from India to Austria are treated as medicines and need either registration as a medicine, which costs millions of euros, or a pharmacist stating a draft sa safety certificate. So if you order as an Austrian Ayurvedic medicines from India, they cannot be imported. They are right sent back at the border. The Ayurvedic products that are used in our country usually come from other European Union countries, especially from Holland, who, which country has a very liberal status for Ayurvedic products, but in Holland all these Ayurvedic products are imported and sold as food supplements. And in having these products come into Austria has been quietly tolerated. Government seems to wait for European Union regulations on these, uh, on these issues. What's the situation about Ayurvedic associations? Yes, there's only one doctor's association, several training organizations. Currently, there's a one-year training course for doctors with 20 participants on its way. And there's no mandatory guidelines for Ayurvedic training. And there's no organization comprising all different interests in Ayurveda. And there's no cooperation with Indian government so far also not from the Indian Embassy. There's a short SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, opportunities, threats. So what are the strengths of Ayurveda? Greatest strength of Ayurveda is that it's the time-tested science of life, the hope for better health in humanity. There's a strong interest in Ayurveda in our country from the general public, from the press, and from the tourism industry. What are the weaknesses? 
The weaknesses are that Ayurveda, Ayurveda is seen in the public as a superficial wellness trend. And there are no joint efforts to systematically promote Ayurveda as a medicine in Austria. The opportunities are to establish Ayurveda as a primary care medicine in Austria and to use the openness of health authorities to pass significant regulations regarding Ayurvedic training in different fields. What are the threats? Can we continue to use Ayurvedic medicines and products in Austria? Can we continue to practice legally? Can Ayurvedic treatment be reimbursed by insurance companies? That's the open questions and that's what we have to work on. And that's what we need the support of India and the support of all the bright minds assembled here. Thank you. This was, thank you very much. Assist me, please. So there's another. Cancel another. another. Yes, another one. Come on. Is there another one? Yes, it says Shachinger number B. This one. Yes. No, 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 no. Uh, wrong one. Another presentation. That's um, in the name of Dr. Ernst Schrott, who is my very dear colleague from Germany whom I've written many books with. And um, this wants to give a little bit wider uh, perspective to the, to the uh, point of view of Europe. Europe. Um, actually, the story of Ayurveda in Germany is a story of success. About 25 years ago, uh, the first Ayurvedic Doctors' Association outside of India, German Ayurveda's Doctors' Association, Deutsche Gesellschaft for Ayurveda, was founded. The founding doctors were trained by, in Maharshi Ayurved by leading Indian writers, Dr. B.D. Triguna, Dr. V.M. Trivedi, Dr. Bharaj Maharshi, Dr. Kasture, Dr. Raja, Dr. Raju, and others. And this was a very fertile seed which sprouted rapidly. Several Panchakarma clinics were founded, and there was a really fast growing interest from general public and the press. So many press articles, so many TV shows, so many interviews resulted from this start in the 80s. More than 20 books about Ayurved were written by members of the German Doctors Association, by Dr. Bauhofer, Dr. Pierz, Dr. Schrott and myself. Many other publications followed. Ayurved is now a household term in Germany and after Mahashi Ayurved, Many other individuals and institutions also started to offer Ayurved, many of them with very little training and main focus on Ayurvedic massage and cosmetics. Research in Ayurvedic herbs starts to be conducted in German university institutions. One of the leading minds is Professor Amon of the University of Tübingen, and he started research on Shalaki about 10 years ago and he's very much also supporting the issue of, uh, of accepting Ayurved from the, from the side of German government. There's a growing interest in the scientific community regarding clinical studies. Now, this is also part of the story of success. Uh, an Unani Association, Global Hakim Ajmal Khan, uh, was giving an award to the world best Ayurved doctor, to a German doctor, Dr. Karim Pietz, who is the uh, leading physician of the Mahashi Ayurved clinic in Bad Ems, which you can see in the, uh, on the bottom. Training in Ayurved, there's several dozens of institutions and individuals often offering training in Ayurved. Most of them are mainly offering training in Ayurvedic massage. Only few institutions offer more holistic training. This is the Academy of the German Doctors Association in cooperation with the Mahashi Universities. Mahindra, 
where Mr. Rosenberg is here and he will give the next presentation. Eurovet connected to Dr. Vasantlad and Dr. Kramming, who is also here. And Seva Academy connected to Professor Rana D and Dr. Vilas Nanal from Pune. And Dafam, Dr. Anand Pawar, who is also a graduate from Pune University and connected to Gujarat University. You can see there's a very close connection to Pune University and you can be very proud of your university and your city in this very great part you're playing in the, uh, in the advancement of IVD. One threat in the training, many institutions offer training in highly advanced Ayurvedic skills, Panchakarma, on a very low level of basic knowledge of Ayurveda and even to persons without medical training. The Academy of the German Association of Ayurveda has refrained from teaching Panchakarma for the recent years for that reason. Um, there's postgraduate doctor's courses in Ayurveda by the German Doctors' Association and by Eurovet, and only these two have received certification for ongoing education from the German doctors' chambers. And I just want to give you a little glimpse into some of the courses structured by this association. They have very impressive PowerPoint teaching media. And also I will show you a few slides on, a, on an electronic encyclopedia of Ayurvedic herbs that was compiled by Dr. Schrott. So this is one of the uh, heads for the PowerPoint presentation. You can see the functions of the doshas and it's all in German, I just go quickly through it. So this is one of the PowerPoint presentation on, in the doctor's training and this is the home page of the uh, encyclopedia on Travia Guna and I just go through it through slides, go a few slides. Uh, you have uh, different ways to get into it by indications, by Ayurvedic terms, by preparations. And this is one of the plants, it's Emblica officinalis. And you can see <clears throat> that it's very holistic. You can see the Ayurvedic terms, the Ayurvedic classification with Rasa, Guna, Vipak, Virya, Prapav. You can see the preparation the preparations is it, it is used for, and you can see the karmas, and you can see the scientific publications. And when you enter one of these publications, you can also find the abstract, and this is updated regularly by email. And this is one of the pictures of AMLA, and you can click any one of the pictures. And what I do in my office, uh, when I prescribe an Ayurvedic product to my patient, I show them the picture of the plants that are in the, in the preparation. And this gives a very good impression to the patient. Then he knows, oh, this is, the, this is the plant, this is the sattvic plant, and this is how it looks like. And it's a very, very good reinforcement of the treatment. His patients are very much more ready to take costs, to take, uh, take the medicines regularly when they know more about it and they can see it. And this is uh, one of the pages on the home page of the German associations. So I will skip over these. Um, there's many institutions, services, and hundreds of hotels offering Ivory Games. And the, pub the public perception of Ayurveda is about the same. Many people in Europe are not aware, especially in the German-speaking countries, that Ayurveda is a holistic medicine. And I think this is something we really have to work on. The legal issues are about the same as in England. There's very great threats coming upon us through the EMEA, the European Medicine Evaluation Agency, and their act on traditional medicine. So we have to closely join shoulders all of the European countries to amend these acts and we need the help of India to furtherly be able to have Ayurvedic propriety medicines available in Europe.
what we need is high quality products and we need the regulations to have them imported. So also for Germany there's the regulation that there's no regulation and, Europe and the uh, Ayurvedic products are imported as food supplements. The strengths, weaknesses and opportunities Ayurveda itself is the strength, it's the eternal knowledge of perfect health for individual and society. And the strong interest is shown by interest by public, scientists, press, tourism industry. The weaknesses we have discussed, we have many, heard many times that India has to do its own homework. We also have to do our homework and we have to join the different interest groups of IVID in Germany and in the European countries. And India is giving more attention to tourists enjoying IVID programs in India than establishing IVID in foreign health systems. That's one of the weaknesses. The opportunities we have talked about, we need a health oriented IVID medicine as opposed to disease administration as it's practiced today in modern medicine. Threat, I left out. Proposal, actually until now, I was thinking that um, we need to propose an Ayurvedic association. We have to have European solutions and yesterday we had this meeting and I'm very happy to announce that we had a meeting of the European uh, group after this meeting late, late night and we are already into founding a European Ayurveda Association. So, yesterday night, late night, there was a proposal committee formed. Oh, it's 2006, I'm sorry for the mistake. And this association should be active and effective in stakeholding and lobbying activities towards the European Union and the governments of all its member countries. It should represent the interests of Ayurvedic practitioners, doctors and scientists, of patient groups, of manufacturers, distributors of Ayurvedic products. This Ayurvedic association should guarantee the authenticity of Ayurved and should not allow any shortcuts in the authenticity and quality of Ayurveda.